mistake you might not even realize you're making, but it's one of the most awkward ones as a reader. In today's season finale of Red Ink, we're gonna discuss dangling participles and dangling modifiers. I'm Amy Lee Strickland, and you're watching Red Ink. The dangling modifier is a broader set of problems, the dangling participle being a very specific one. A participle is a type of verb phrase that acts like a modifier for an item in a sentence, usually the subject. I walk to school, worrying the whole way about my history exam. As you can see, the participle attaches to the subject. Worrying the whole way about my history exam is that participle for I. So here's the participle at the beginning of a sentence. Feeling a bit peckish, I headed into the kitchen. Feeling a bit peckish is a participle and an adjective phrase that describes the subject, I. So what's a dangling participle? A dangling participle is a participle that does not correctly correspond to the subject. It happens most often when we open the sentence with the participle. It's just easier for people to get mixed up that way. Here's an example. Reading Harry Potter, the bus arrived to take the girls to school. You see the problem here? We have a school bus reading Harry Potter, and while the bus has impeccable taste in books, and in the world of Harry Potter might very well be able to read a book, it's not right. Now we could fix this sentence by saying, reading Harry Potter, the girl waited for the school bus. Or we could add a little more to the modifier and make it a prepositional phrase to keep the same information in the sentence. While the girl read Harry Potter, the bus arrived to take her to school. A dangling modifier, then, is any of the broader set of modifiers that does not attach correctly to the right noun in the sentence. I'll show you one more example from a writing meme that I've seen going around the internet this week. It's a very useful chart of specific emotions with a very troubling grammar mistake as the headline. As a writer, this has proven to be a truly valuable chart. You see the problem? The chart is the writer. In fact, the person who is the writer isn't even present in the sentence. Now, we could fix this sentence by saying, as a writer, I have found this to be a truly valuable chart. Look out for those dangling modifier, guys. Be careful, especially when you see a gerund that's the ing version of a verb. This has been Red Ink. Remember to like and to share this video. And if you want to be notified when season two starts, subscribe to this channel. I'm going to have 12 more episodes coming in a few more months with even more three to four minute grammar tips. In a couple months in season two, I'll cover plural and possessive, its and its, whose, whose, and whose, and why you don't put two spaces between your sentences anymore. That'll be a guest star for that. Now, I don't have the full season planned yet, so if there's something that you keep seeing that you think I should cover, leave a note in the comments below. I've already got some suggestions from folks, and when I'm ready to sit down and plot that season more carefully, I will be checking this video. So, comment below. What drives you bananas? What do you see happening over and over and over again? Let me know. In the meantime, I'll be heading out to some conventions across the South. I've got an appearance at Kingdom Comics July 18th in Vestavia Hills, Alabama. Then, uh, very shortly after, I will be at Magic City Con in Birmingham. It's gonna be the 24th through the 26th. I will be visiting the Shelby County Arts Council on September 24th in the evening to talk about my books there. And then I'll be at Rocket City Lit Festival in Huntsville, Alabama on the 10th and 11th of October. And finally, Conjuration Con in Atlanta. That's a Harry Potter convention in its second year. It was the best con that I went to last year. That will be in Atlanta November 13th through 15th, so come by and see me. I'll also be using this time to develop a monthly vlog for Indie Visible, uh, indie-visible.com. Head over there, check it out. They've got some really great resources for independent authors, including a collection of book designers and cover designers and editors that you can use to get your product out there. So look out for an announcement on that. I'll probably be sticking something on this channel to let you know that you can go check that out. I'll be covering uh, more general indie publishing issues and tips there rather than just grammar. Until then, have a good summer and be safe tonight. Don't blow your thumbs off. Happy birthday, America.